Life-changing homemaking secrets I learned from Louisa May Alcott's Little Women, part two. Hello everyone, Jennifer L. Scott here and welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. I hope you saw part one of 15 life-changing homemaking secrets from Little Women. If not, I will leave the video in the iCard up above or I will leave it linked down below as well. This is part two and we're gonna go through tips eight through 15 in today's video. Today's video is brought to us by The Chic Society, which is the private membership group I have here on YouTube. Membership is only $1.99 a month. There are also some upper tiers as well, and they get recognition in the monthly videos. So you're seeing some of those here. I just wanna thank The Chic Society so much for your support. At the end of this video, I'm going to share the elegant connoisseurs with you. They are the highest patrons of the channel. I do one vodcast a week for The Chic Society, and I go live once a month, and we even have a pen pal program. We have a lot going on. So I hope that you'll consider joining and supporting The Daily Connoisseur in 2022. Okay, let's jump right into the life-changing homemaking secrets. And I'm starting off with the funniest one. Okay, this is life-changing homemaking secret number eight, and that is housekeeping ain't no joke. <laughs> that is a direct quote from the book. We have on page 107 in chapter 11, the girls are quoting Hannah, the housekeeper. So we must keep in mind that Marmee in Little Women does have a housekeeper, Hannah, who I think she lives with them. She's there every day uh, and she helps them with everything. And the girls laugh because Hannah is known for saying this. So in this chapter, experiments. The girls are experimenting with just being idle all day, doing whatever they want, not working, and it's not going well. So it says here on page 107, in fact, it was an immense relief to them all to have a little work and took hold with a will, but soon realized the truth of Hannah's saying, housekeeping ain't no joke. <laughs> So the girls are realizing how much work goes into housekeeping. And I think it's really important for us as parents to convey this truth to our children because a lot of us, because it's easier, we pick up after them, we do everything for them, and they think that these things just magically happen. It's good for them to experience what is the reality of, of homemaking and housekeeping. It ain't no joke, it is hard. Long-term, sustainable housekeeping and homemaking is very difficult. It never relents. Every day there's more to do. So it ain't no joke, okay, just like Hannah says. Homemaking secret number nine is that homemaking should not fall on the shoulders of only one person. So on page 112, Marmee says, yes, I wanted you to see how the comfort of all depends on each doing her share faithfully. So homemaking, housekeeping, it should not all fall on one person. So whether you hire help and you hire a housekeeper to help you, and there's nothing wrong with that, Marmee had Hannah, for example, or if you are not able to do that, you have everyone in your family pitch in. I'm going to give a plug to Ashley Buffa of Freedom Moms. She's one of the elegant connoisseurs at the end of the videos. She has a smart kids chore system, which I'll leave down below. But having everybody in the whole family pitching in and, and doing their part, this is responsible for the comfort of all. The homemaker, the housekeeper should not be the martyr breaking her back or his back over just doing absolutely everything for everyone, okay? And that is incredibly important. Don't try to do everything yourself. Get help, there's no shame in it. And it's just better that way. We're meant to live in community and help each other like that. Life-changing homemaking secret number 10 is that we need to reframe our attitudes about work, especially hard work that we don't want to do. On page 156, Marmee says that work is a blessed solace. I love that. Work is a blessed or blessed solace. Solace means comfort or consolation in a time of distress or sadness. And I, I love that and I find that too. So when we turn to our work, when we turn to our homemaking, especially if we're going through a hard time, we can find a comfort in that, a solace in that. Let's say you're going through a difficult time in your life. You might find it comforting to bake something or to rearrange your living room. I think we all have that innate part of ourselves. 
what's the movie, the movie Amelie that came out, it was like a French film that came out a long time ago. She's very upset at the end of the film and she's making a pie, that's what comforts her, right? So we all do that in a way and I definitely do that. Most of us don't turn to the unpleasant things like scrubbing toilets when, <laughs> when we need solace, but you tend to go to the comforting things, the things you like doing, making a pie or arranging flowers or doing something to take your mind off of it. So work is a blessed solace. Also listen to this on page 150. It says, poor Hannah was the first to recover and with unconscious wisdom, she set all the rest a good example for with her work was a panacea for most afflictions. What is a panacea? The definition is a solution or remedy for all difficulties or diseases. So again, we see that work can help us in times of stress and trouble, homemaking work. Tip number 11, don't miss the homeliest tasks by having everybody do everything for you. So in one of the previous tips, we mentioned that you shouldn't do everything yourself. However, on the flip side, you shouldn't hire everything out. You shouldn't have everybody else do everything for you because you miss some of the beauty of homemaking when you do that. So it says here on page 220, this is part two, chapter 24 called Gossip. It says, people who hire all these things done for them never know what they lose, for the homeliest tasks get beautified if loving hands do them. And Meg found so many proofs of this that evening in her small nest, from the kitchen roller to the silver vase on the parlor table, was eloquent of the home love and tender forethought. So when Meg marries John, they are all a bit concerned because he's not as wealthy as maybe they would have liked him to be and she's not able to hire household help, but she's learning that if she was able to hire everything out, she would miss some of those homely tasks that are so rewarding in homemaking. And some of these tasks can only be beautified by the person who lives there. And the thing that comes to mind for me is interior design. It is very popular among the wealthy to hire interior designers. And sometimes you'll see tours of their homes and you think there's nothing of that person in this home. It's too curated, it's too perfect, it's too, <laughs> it's from an interior designer. But what I love is when I watch those home tours and yes, they've worked with an interior designer, but then the homeowner actually puts stamps of things that they personally love themselves, like a favorite painting or something that reflects them. It's not all so impersonal. So we must put our stamp on everything and, and oversee things and beautify them ourselves to truly make it personal. Life-changing homemaking secret number 12. If homemaking isn't done regularly, Everything else does not go well. These are words of wisdom from Hannah on page 236 in chapter 26, Artistic Attempts. And Hannah says, it says, Hannah was out of humor because her week's work was deranged and prophesied that if the washin and ironin weren't done regular, nothing would go well anywheres. And so she's prophesying this. She's panicking because Hannah didn't get to do what she normally does during the week. And so she says, if you don't keep on top of the washing and the ironing and the regular things that you have to do, everything else is going to be disrupted. And if you think about it, that's true. Let's say your household gets behind on washing the dishes and then the next day there are no dishes. So you're late for work or you're late for school because you had to wash things by hand to get them so you could have breakfast. Or let's say you're behind on the laundry and nobody has anything to wear. Then you have to go in and kind of steam something to make it look presentable. Do you see that when you get behind on your homemaking routines, it affects everything and not in a positive way. So Hannah has got a lot of words of wisdom in this book. Life-changing homemaking secret number 13 is that you should make the best of what you have in your home. In that same chapter on the next page, 237, it says, the parlor struck her as looking uncommonly shabby, but without stopping to sigh for what she had not, the skillfully made the best of what she had, arranging chairs over the worn places in the carpet, covering stains on the walls with homemade statuary, which gave an artistic air to the room, as did the lovely vases of flowers Joe scattered about. Basically what they're doing is making the best of what they have. The parlor is looking shabby, uncommonly shabby, shabbier than usual. But without stopping to decipher what she had not, they skillfully made the best of what 
they had. And that's what we have to do with our home. There's going to be parts of our home that look uncommonly shabby. <laughs> and instead of just sitting there and fretting and wishing it was different, we have to make the best of what we have. And uh, Joe cheered up the room with, with vases of flowers. You could do that. You could cheer it up in a variety of ways. But the point is to not focus on the negative aspects of our home, but to really cheer it up with the positive aspects. Life-changing homemaking secret number 14 is that a homemaker's happiest kingdom is home. Don't you love that quote? Your home is a happy kingdom. You could think about it like that. On page 358 in chapter 38 called On the Shelf, Meg learned that a woman's happiest kingdom is home. Her highest honor, the art of ruling it not as queen, but as wise wife and mother. So you could interpret this to fit your own life, of course, but we as homemakers, whoever we are, we can find that home can be our happiest kingdom. We could turn it into that for ourselves. Not a place that we can't wait to get rid of because it's so disorganized and messy, but a happy kingdom. You could have your sofa as your throne. That's how you can think about it and that we could find true contentment there, that our world could revolve around that life at home when we are indeed at home. And the final tip, life-changing homemaking secret number 15, is that the homemaker's spirit always resides at home. Now, this is very bittersweet in chapter 42, all alone, page 389. And by the way, if you don't know the Little Women books, there's a spoiler alert about to happen. So if you don't want to hear that, then turn off the video <laughs> or fast forward it. Okay, I'm assuming that everybody who is here is okay with me telling you this information, but obviously we know what happens to Beth, the youngest sister. So it says on page 389, brooms and dishcloths never could be as distasteful as they once had been, for Beth had presided over both and something of her housewifely spirit seemed to linger around the little mop and the old brush never thrown away. As she used them, Joe found herself humming the songs Beth used to hum, imitating Beth's orderly ways and giving the little touches here and there that kept everything fresh and cozy, which was the first step toward making home happy. Beth is no longer there, but Joe senses her, even in the brooms and the dishcloths and the way that she used to do things. And that memory sticks with her sister. Your legacy will always be there. It's there now while you are still there and it will be there long after you're gone because your children will remember you. They will remember how you did certain things. They will remember the smell of the cleaning products you use, the, the smell of the, the muffins that you baked in the oven. These things will really stick with your family. And so you might feel that you're not making an impact on anybody, that you're just doing mundane drudgery work, but really the homemaker spirit pervades over the entire home and it is a legacy that people take with them. So I hope that that final note uh, encourages you in your walk as a homemaker. And now we are going to look at the elegant connoisseurs from the Chic Society. Amanda Dykes, whose newest novel honors the 100th anniversary of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier through a journey of friendship and hope. Amy Floor from Azalea Spa Goods, handcrafted aromatherapy body oils. Discover exquisite watercolor bookmarks, rabbit art, fine art note cards, and small affordable original paintings by Susan Poitevin at the Brown Rabbit Studio Etsy shop. Bernadette Petrata. As director of Polite Society School of Etiquette, Mrs. Petrata's mission is to educate adults and children in manners, decorum, dining principles, and social skills through in-person and online courses, speaking engagements, specialty tea events, and instructional books. Jenny Williams from Carrot Top Paper Shop offering colorful literary wall art and book-themed gifts to inspire every woman to be the heroine of her life. Elaine Brisebois is a certified nutritionist and women's weight loss coach. Download her elegant eating handbook, simple and effective strategies for permanently living at your natural weight to get started. Emily McNeil, artist. Fine art enables us to see our everyday moments as they are designed to be, full of loveliness and pulsing with life. Ashley Buffa from Freedom Moms. Learning to treat chores as a family team is the key to creating and maintaining a tidy, organized home, and it's attainable through the Freedom Mom Smart Kid Chore System. Guy Blaze, author of the book Love Like the French, a guide to better romance and relationships. 
Carrie Van Hooser, author of Tis the Season for Poetry, Through the Year with Poems and Activities for Children and Their Families. Inspired by Nikki, YouTube channel and Etsy shop, making the everyday beautiful. Julie Coleman from My Confident Closet. Julie helps you build a seasonal wardrobe that fits your style and budget. Lindy Sellers, health, beauty, and lifestyle for women 40 plus. Nicole Brignol, founder of Lovely Bits, organic intimate care for women. Sarah Miller offers jewelry, cork checkbook covers, prints of her grandmother's artwork, and more. Visit her at sarahmillerjewelry.com. Sheer Fibers, which provides costume and handmade slippers, mittens, wool felted soaps, garlands, and much more, all made from all natural sheep's wool fiber. Mrs. Shockley from A Home for Elegance Dress Boutique. Visit her online at ahomeforelegance.com. Sarah Morgan Wellness. Sarah is a wellness coach specializing in helping stressed out women, especially moms, improve their self-esteem, find the time and motivation for self-care, and create a home that promotes wellness so they can feel their best. Learn more at sarahmorganwellness.com. Alan Scottish Shortbread uses their Scottish grandmother's heirloom family recipe to bake small batches of buttery shortbread that pairs perfectly with a pot of tea. Learn more at allenscottishshortbread.com. Stern Brothers Jewelry is a family-owned, custom-designed jewelry store specializing in making heirloom jewelry into something special for the next generation to cherish. Something to cherish. Beautiful and meaningful products that promote the celebration and gift of life based off of the watercolor designs of artist Cherish Flyter. Vsel Victoria, your Jaffra Beauty Consultant, featuring beautiful products such as Royal Jelly Skincare Rituals, Royal Almond Body Oils and Lotions, as well as Sumptuous Color. Special offers every month. And thank you to the following. Catherine Ray, Adelaide Beer, Carly Tom from Living in Loveliness, Cindy Bulharowski, Davika Danapala, Janelyn Voigt, Janice Leitner, Jet Rally Heron, Gina K. Kenry, Jenny Candelaria, Juliette Keeler Laban, Linda Eckloff, Marie Caudill, and Maria Condor. Thank you so much to the Sheik Society for bringing us this series this month. If you're interested in joining the Sheik Society, I will leave the link down below or you could press the join button as well. I hope you enjoyed this look into Louisa May Alcott's Little Women. Don't worry, this series will continue. I'm currently reading Anne of Green Gables, so we're going to be looking at that as well. I hope that you enjoy this series. If you do, please give it a thumbs up, and I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. Thank you for joining me here on The Daily Connoisseur. Keep calm, remain classy, and Merry Christmas, and I will see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.